Hi guys, I'm here today to do my May book haul. As always, I will link all of the books that I talk about in the description box down below. So the first book I'm going to show you today is this one, which I recently bought called This Young Monster by Charlie Fox, and it's published by Fitzcarraldo Editions. They publish really, really beautiful books, either in white or blue. This is a non-fiction book, and it's quite difficult to describe, but it's a series of essays basically on the representation of monsters in films. Um, and in pop culture, and I think it's going to be really fascinating because the way that Charlie writes his essays is in quite an unusual way. So I'm looking forward to reading more of this. I've already read the first one and liked it very much and was very intrigued. In a similar vein, I also picked up this book here, which I mentioned in my updated fairy tale collection video, which I'll link up here and also down below. It's called Beauty and the Beast Classic Tales About Animal Brides and Grooms from Around the World which is exactly what it says on the tin. So all the different portrayals of animal brides and animal grooms in different countries and different cultures. And I really like the sticker that they put on the front here, which says, now a major motion picture, which made me giggle quite a lot. Um, the next one is a book that landed on my doormat. I didn't know it was coming and I was so super excited when I opened it and saw what it is. It's a proof copy of a book that I didn't know was happening um, called How Saints Die by Carmen Marcus. Now, if you might remember, in October last year, I went to the Durham Book Festival and I was their vlogger in residence. And one of the events that I really, really loved was an event by Carmen Marcus and it was poetry and music and it was beautiful and then it made me cry. I'm gonna link that video down below and up here if you would like to go and listen to it. But this is her novel and it sounds fascinating. It says, How Saints Die introduces Ellie Fleck who lives with her fisherman father, Peter, on the wild North Yorkshire coast. It's the 1980s and her mother's breakdown is discussed only in whispers with the promises of better by Christmas, but no further explanation. Steering by the light of her dad's sea myths, her mum's memories of home across the water, and a fierce spirit all her own, Ellie begins to learn in these strange and sudden circumstances who she is and what she can become. This is above all a celebration of the power of stories to shape, nourish, and even save us. So fairy tales, myths, and it has it has a wolf on the cover. So and it's set on a coast in the north of England. So sign me up. I also picked up this one here, which I've been meaning to pick up for so long, and I'm sure that so many of you out there are like, Jen, this is such an amazing book, because I get told this so much in the comments. I'm really fascinated about books about death and our culture and how we think about death and how that's different in different countries around the world, and I've read lots of books to do with this, but I haven't read this one, so I thought I would rectify this, which is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematorium by Caitlin Doty. Um, she has a YouTube channel, which I will link down below. She is a mortician and she talks about death from the point of view of her job and it just sounds really interesting so I thought I would finally pick that one up. I also picked up this one as I'm sure many of you did because Mercedes absolutely raved about it. It had been on my radar for a while but when she said she loved it so much I was like right okay I will pick it up. Yes I will. It's called The Clay Girl and it's by Heather Tucker and it has this absolutely stunning cover. I'll read you the very beginning of the blurb. It says, Vincent Appleton smiles at his daughters, raises a gun and blows off his head. For the Appleton sisters, life has unraveled many times before, but this time it explodes. Eight-year-old Harriet, known as Ari, is dispatched to Kate Breton and her Aunt Mary, who is purported to eat little girls. But Mary and her partner Nia offer an unexpected refuge to Ari and her steadfast companion Jasper, her imaginary seahorse. I am so excited about this one, which I've had on my radar since Christmas. Um, I requested it as a review copy from Blood Axe in January, and they said, you're very keen, Jen, it's not out till May, we'll send it to you when we have copies, probably in May. And I was like, that's fine, I will wait very patiently. I've seen Chrissy Williams read her work aloud, and um, I've read some of her pamphlets as well, and I love it when she writes poetry about bears, so I was super thrilled to see that she has a collection out which is called Bear. Um, and I will give you a sample of some of the poetry in my spring favorites, because the first poem is, is one of my absolute favorites. Um, but the way that she writes is really accessible and really thought provoking and wonderful. And I'll leave a link to this. There's probably an extract on the website or I'll leave some links to some poems of hers down below that you can go and check out to see if it's your kind of thing. Now, a book I read this month, which I will be talking about in my April wrap-up, which will be going up soon, led me to want to read more Angela Carter. I've read a lot of Angela Carter. Um, I, I went through a period at uni of reading a lot of her stuff, not because 
I say at uni, it wasn't anything to do with my university course. I think I just discovered her at university and wanted to eat everything that she had written. Um, and then I ended up not eating everything that she'd written and moved on to something else. But there was a period where I intensely read a lot of her stuff. And at the moment I'm rereading The Bloody Chamber because why wouldn't you do that with your life? Um, but I've picked up three books of hers that for some reason I'd never read before um, and hopefully I will get to those in the not too distant future. So the first one is The Magic Toy Shop, which is not an obscure one of hers. It's one that is well known and well loved and has this new stunning cover, which I enjoy very, very much. It says, one night, Melanie walks through the garden in her mother's wedding dress. The next morning, her world is shattered. Forced to leave her childhood home, she is sent to London to live with relatives she has never met. Gentle Aunt Margaret, meet since her wedding day, and her brothers Francie and Finn. Brooding over all is Uncle Philip, who loves only the puppets he creates in his workshop, which are life-size and uncannily lifelike. I mean, Angela Carter, magical realism, fairy tales, darkness, we have Heroes and Villains by Angela Carter. Sharp-eyed Marianne lives in a white tower made of steel and concrete with her father and other professors. Outside, where the land is thickly wooded and wild beasts roam, live the barbarians, who raid and pillage in order to survive. Marianne is strictly forbidden to leave her civilised world, but fascinated by these savage outsiders, decides to escape. There, beyond the wire fences, she will discover a decaying paradise, encounter the tattooed barbarian boy, Jewel, and go beyond the darkest limits of her imagination. So that's one of her dystopian novels. And then we've got this one, which is The Passion of New Eve, which plays with gender performance. So, I'm excited. Lenora Carrington is my favourite painter. I'll insert some pictures of hers here so you can see. She was a surrealist artist and also a writer. She wrote something called The Hearing Trumpet, which is a bit like Alice in Wonderland. There are lots of books of hers being published this year, un like unpublished works or rediscovered works or just reissues and beautiful editions of new works because this year marks 100 years since she was born. So I was really eager to pick up this book here, which is The Complete Stories of Lenora Carrington. And it's introduced by Catherine Davis. And I love the shape of it too. It's published really, really beautifully. So this is what it says on the tin. It's a collection of her short stories and I'm sure that her writing will be as beautiful and surrealist as her artwork. Orbit Books sent me this for review, which is The Boy on the Bridge by M.R. Carey. Now you may recognise this cover because it looks very similar to The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey, which was one of my favourite books of 2014. It's Matilda Meets the Walking Dead. It's a great, fun, terrifying read and was made into an equally fantastic film. So I was sent this because I loved the first book, but also because I interviewed Mike Carey last week um, for the next episode of my podcast, which I'm going to be putting up soon. We talked about comics because he writes for DC and Marvel. We talked about The Girl with All the Gifts and how that came into being and also how um, he wrote the screenplay for the film and he actually wrote that kind of alongside writing the novel which I think is why the film and the book work so well together. And we also talked about this. I'm just hitting myself in the ear with it. We also talked about this which is not the sequel, it's a prequel. Um, and it is about the story of the van that they discover in The Girl With All The Gifts. They discover it and there's one dead person in it. So it's about the scientists and the soldiers in that van and what happened to them and how it came to be abandoned. So I'm reading it at the moment and I'll report back when I finish reading it, but do look out for that podcast. It's gonna go up in the next couple of weeks. Mike was a joy to chat to and he had lots of fascinating things to say. Two more books to show you. The second to last is this one here, which I think might be really helpful to those of you out there who are aspiring writers. And it's called Create Your Own Universe. And it's by the Brothers McLeod, who are the illustrators of my Weird Things Customer Say in Bookshops series. This is their new book and it is all about how to invent stories, characters and ideas. So basically it is, it's an activity book which encourages you to think about things in different ways and basically just to help you get your creative juices flowing and I think that it's really really lovely. And finally the last one is one that was sent to me by Flying Eye Books and they sent it to me because this is a modern folk tale. It is a picture book and it's called The Secret of Black Rock. So I'll talk about it once I finish reading it. Um, or started reading it and finished reading it, which will probably happen not soon after the other one. And some of the pages open like this lengthways, which I think is a really cool idea. So yeah, it looks really beautiful and I'll talk about it some more once I've read it. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. As I said, I'll link all of them in the description box down below. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you might want to check any of these out or if you have any book recommendations for me. I hope you guys are having a great week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.